Please excuse the clickbaity title. Have you ever considered using a zoom lens on a Leica camera? This is now one of my most used lenses. So in this video, we're gonna look at the Leica 35-70 to zoom lens. Hello, Matt here. Hope you guys are all well. After posting a series of images on social media, I had quite a few of you reach out to me asking whether or not you should buy the 35-70. to This video will hopefully give you a good understanding of the 35-70 to zoom lens. I'll mention a few different alternatives so you know which one to buy and I'll explain which cameras it will fit on. Okay, so first things first, <laughs> I mounted the 35-70 to lens on my Leica M240. For those of you that don't know, this is a Leica R lens, so I'd need to use a Leica R to M adapter. Because this is a non-range from a coupled lens, I then need to use an EVF or the live view to be able to focus this lens. This is the Leica Vera Elmo R 35-70 f4. The aperture scale gives you half stop clicks. It also has the additional feature of being a macro lens. Just to give you an idea of how close you can actually get to your subject with the macro setting selected, this is me focusing on the Leica R6. And here is an example photo just to see how close you can actually get. If I unscrew the hood for a second, you can see how the lens is moving a bit better so 0.6 meters through to infinity and that's kind of how much extension you're getting on the lens and then 35 mil to 70 mil now as i say i don't normally use the lens on the like m240 because now i have better cameras that i can use it on so the camera i'm using it on the most is the leica sl the Leica SL is L mount, so you then need a Leica R to Leica L adapter, or do the same as me, and I use R to M, M to L, because they use M mount and L mount cameras. The lens balance is much better on a Leica SL camera, and then also because it's full frame mirrorless, you really do get the full benefit. The Leica SL and the 35-70 zoom lens reminds me a bit of my old Nikon D800 and 35-70 zoom lens setup. Really good in the studio, it gives you the versatility when you don't need a fast lens and you're using strobes, for example. I guess I should have mentioned at the start, because it's an R lens, this is a manual focus lens, not an autofocus lens. But with the big bright viewfinder of the SL, you really can't miss, so it's really good. So what about using the lens on the Panasonic Lumix S5? I've had some great results for photos, and here is a video clip pulling focus with the 35-70 on the Lumix S5, just to give you an idea of how the video footage looks. I have used this lens for YouTube videos in the past. See my Leica SL video as one example. And then for you Leica CL users, what about on a Leica CL? Because the Leica CL is an APS-C crop sensor camera. It's going to be the equivalent of 52mm to 112mm. Personally, I think the lens is going to be a bit big and a bit front heavy on a Leica CL. But of course you could use it. And then the cameras which the lens was actually designed for. Leica R cameras. This is a Leica R6. And this is obviously a film camera, see that review. So I use this setup if I'm shooting film, and then I use the SL setup if I'm using digital. So now onto the more important bit, if you're looking to buy this lens. If you look on eBay, there are two similar lenses, and then a third, which is also a, a consideration. 35 to 70 f4, which is this one. You have the 35 to 70 f3.5. And then for those of you tempted by something wider, there's also the 28 to 70. So the question you may have is, which is the best zoom lens to get for yourself and why did I buy this particular zoom lens? So first we have the 28-70. to This is a Leica Design Sigma made lens. The 28-70 to has more distortion at the 28mm end and the 70mm end compared to the version I have. And the image quality is said to not improve even when you stop the lens down. Take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt, but that seems to be the general conclusion for the 28 to 70. And that's why you see that lens at a lower price than you'll see this lens. Option number two is the Leica 35 to 70 f3.5 lens. Now there's actually two versions of this lens as I understand it. There's the 60mm filter size and the 67mm filter size. The 60mm version is a Minolta lens rebadged as Leica. And the 67mm version has Minolta optics mounted within a Leica barrel. But both of them are Minolta optics, so that's where you get some of the jokes in the past of, oh, are you using a Minolta lens on your Leica, things like that. That then brings me on to this lens, the Leica 35-70. to This is a Leica lens, but it was actually made by, if I say this correctly, Kyo Sierra. This company made the 35-70 to Leica and the 80-200. to So these are my two zoom lenses, both Leica lenses, both high quality optics. So now onto the bit which may blow your mind. The Leica Vario Elmar 35-70 to F4 is said to perform as well, if not better, than the equivalent prime lenses at the same apertures. So for example, the Leica Summicron 35 f2 that I use, 
the Lucas Summerlux 35 1.4, the Lucas Summercron 50 f2 that I use. If you stop all those lenses down to f4 onwards, this zoom lens should perform as well, if not better. And that detail alone, written by the designer of these lenses, Irwin Putz, was enough to make me buy this lens at the higher price tag. So in summary, if you want prime lens quality optics in a zoom lens, look to get the Leica 35-70 f4 lens and pay the higher price tag. It's still going to be cheaper than buying the two prime lenses. Obviously, you just don't have the, the extra speed. And if you want the extra detail, it's said to be its best at 35 or 50 and very slightly weaker at 70mm. I treat the 35 to 70 as three prime lenses in one lens, so it saves me carrying three lenses. Here are some example photos that I've shot with the Leica 35 to 70 f4 lens. I find it perfect for travel, perfect for portraits, particularly good on the SL and obviously on the Leica R cameras. And as long as you can cope with having an f4 maximum aperture, you're probably going to love this lens. So the photos you just saw were all shot with the Leica SL in Tenerife, and I love the colours from this lens camera combination. Next, these are black and white photos, again shot with the Leica SL full frame camera and with the lens usually at 35mm or 70mm. I tend to use one end or the other mostly. Right, now these photos are all film photos. These are all shot with the Leica R6 or potentially the Leica R6 II. All of these film photos are home processed, scanned with a Epson V800 flatbed scanner and the shot between ISO 100 and ISO 400. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And as always, a massive thanks to my patrons. Thanks for watching. Bye.